took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Grief and anguish came over him, and he said to them, The sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep walking. He went a little farther on, threw himself face downward on the ground, and prayed, My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. Get not what I want, but what you want. Then he returned to the three disciples and found them asleep, and he said to Peter, How is it that you three were not able to keep watch with me for even one hour? Keep watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing to flesh me. Once more, Jesus went away and prayed, My father, this cup of suffering cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. He returned once more and found the disciples asleep. They could not keep their eyes open. Again, Jesus left them, went away, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he returned to his disciples and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, here's the man who betrayed. Jesus was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent by the chief priests and the elders. The traitor had given the crowd a signal. The man I call is the one you want. The rest of Judas went straight to Jesus and said, Peace be with you, teacher. Jesus answered, Be quick about it, friend. Then they came up, arrested Jesus, and held him tight. One of those who were with Jesus drew his sword and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place. Jesus said to him, All who take the sword will die by the sword. Don't you know that I can call on my father for help? And at once he would send me more than twelve armies of angels? But in that case, how could the scriptures come true, which say that this is what would happen? Then Jesus spoke to the crowd. Did you have to come with swords and clubs to capture me, as though I were an outlaw? Every day I sat down and taught in the temple, and you did not arrest me. But all this has happened in order to make it come true with the prophets who wrote in the scriptures. Then all the disciples left him and ran away. Those who had arrested Jesus took him into the house of Caiaphas and the high priest. The teachers of the law and the elders had gathered together. Peter followed from a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest's house. He went into the courtyard and sat down with the guards to see how it would all come out. The chief priests and the whole council tried to find false evidence against Jesus to put him to death. But they could not find any, even though many people came forward and told lies about him. Finally, two men stepped up and said, This means that I am able to tear down the temple and three days later built a bad The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer to give this excuse against you? But Jesus kept quiet. Again, the high priest spoke to him. In the name of the living God, I'll put you under oath. Who tell us that you are the Messiah? Jesus answered him. So you said, but I tell all of you, from this time on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right side of the Almighty and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, Bless me, you know not hear any more witnesses. You just heard his bless me. What do you think? They answered, He is your king, must die. Then they spat on his face and beat him, and those who slapped him said, Prophecy for us and the guests who hit you. Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard when one of the high priest's servant women came to him and said, You too are good. But he denied it in front of them all. I don't know what you were talking about. He answered and one asked, went on out to the entrance of the courtyard. Another servant woman saw him and said to the men Again, Peter denied it and answered, Then Peter said, I swear that I'm telling the truth. They have to me if I'm not. I do not know that. Just then, a rooster crowed, and Peter remembered what Jesus had told him. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times if you do not know me. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders made their plans against Jesus to put him to death. They put him in chains, let him off, and handed him over to the pilot, the Roman governor. When Judas, the traitor, learned that Jesus had been put to death, Judas threw the coins down the temple and left. Then he went off and hanged himself. The chief
seems to be the point that this is blood and it's against our law to put in a temple treasury. After reaching an agreement about it, they used the money to buy Potter's Hill as a cemetery for foreigners. That is why that bill is called Field of Blood to this very day. Then, what the prophet Jeremiah had said came true. They took the 30 silver coins, the amount the people of Israel had agreed to pay for them, and used the money to buy the Potter's Field, as the Lord had commanded him. Jesus stood before the Roman governor and questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked. So you say, answered Jesus, but he said nothing in response to the accusations of the chief priests and the elders. So Pilate said to him, Don't you hear all these things that you have? But Jesus refused to answer a single word, but the result of the governor was greatly surprised. At every Passover festival, the Roman governor was in the habit of setting free any one prisoner the crowd asked for. At that time, there was a well-known prisoner named Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate asked him, which one do you want me to set for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus called the Messiah? He knew very well that the Jewish, Jewish authorities had handed Jesus over him because they were jealous. While Pilate was sitting in the judgment hall, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that innocent man, because in a dream last night I suffered much on account of him. The chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask Pilate to set Barabbas free and have Jesus put to death. But Pilate asked the crowd, which one of these do you want me to set free for you? Right, right. The answer. What then shall I do with Jesus, Jesus called the Messiah? Pilate asked them. Crucify him. They all answered. But Pilate asked, What crime has he committed? Then they started shouting at the top of their voices, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that it was no use to go on, but that, that a bride might break out, he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd, and said, I am not responsible for the death of this man. This is your doing. The whole crowd answered. Then Pilate set Barabbas free for them, and after he had Jesus whipped, he handed him over to be crucified. Then Pilate's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's palace, and the whole company gathered around him. They stripped off his clothes and put a scarlet robe on him. Then they made a crown of thorny branches and placed it on his head, and put a stick in his right hand. Then they knelt before him and made fun of him. Long they said. They spat on him and took the stick and hit him over the head. When they had finished making fun of him, they took the robe off and put it down. He put his clothes, his own clothes back on them. Then they led him out to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine mixed with a bitter substance, but after tasting it, he would not drink it. They crucified him crucified him, and then they divided his clothes among them by throwing dice. After that, they sat there and watched him. Above his head, they put the written notice of the accusation against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Then they crucified two bandits with Jesus, one on his right and the other on his left. People passing by shook their heads and hurled insults at Jesus. You were born to carry out the temple and build it back up to three days. Save yourself to your God's son. Come on down from house. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders made fun of him. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. It is in you to be in Israel. If you will come down and walk out, he will believe in him. He trusts in God and he claims to be God's son. Well, well then, let us see if God wants to save him now. Even the bandits who had been crucified with him insulted him in the same way. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which left for three hours. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people standing there heard him and said, One of them ran up, ran up at once, took a sponge and soaked it in cheap wine, put it on the end of a stick and tried to make him drink it. But the other said, Wait, let us see if I like to come and save Jesus again gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Then the curtain hanging in the temple was torn and two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split apart, the graves broke open. And many of God's people who had died were raised to life. They left the graves, and after Jesus rose from death, they went into the holy city where many people saw them. When the army officer and the soldiers with him who were watching Jesus saw the earthquake and everything else that happened, they were terrified and said, He really was the Son of God. 